Glad to have you with us for Exiles TV. I'm Bill Pafita. Kevin Gallagher taking some time off as he is uh, healing up from his uh, chemotherapy and his uh, radiation treatment. Uh, we expect to see him back chipper and ready to go in just a couple of weeks. Um, we're coming to you live today from uh, Bayou Smokehouse. Good old-fashioned barbecue on Corsi Boulevard in Baton Rouge. Uh, for those of you in the Baton Rouge area, it is worth a short drive to come on out. Great food. Really, truly old-fashioned barbecue. For those of you who may be visiting Baton Rouge sometime soon, make it your lunch or dinner stop. I guarantee that you are going to like it. Well, I was hoping we wouldn't have to talk about the weather today. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to talk about it. Once we get to about midday on Saturday throughout our viewing area, so it'll be earlier in the Lafayette area, it'll be probably around 11 in the Baton Rouge area, River Parishes, 11, noon in New Orleans area, etc. We should be done with this deluge. But oh my goodness. It just comes and it goes. I drove over here in beautiful sunlight with a beautiful, nice breeze, a moderate temperature. And next thing I know, it looks like 15 minutes before sundown out there because of the cloud cover building and building and building. So here's what our friends at the National Weather Service are telling us. Throughout today, Thursday, throughout Friday, we are going to have isolated, scattered thunderstorms that do have a pretty good amount of energy in them, which means some of these can be severe. Uh, some of these are the kind of things that, that uh, can cause minor street flooding and things like that. There are hail uh, stones in the forecast for the first time. So wherever you are, and even if you're watching me on the replay at 10 p.m., uh, you're still going to have to be alert, keep your weather radio handy, and see what's happening because uh, a lot of these things come up in the middle of the night. Uh, if, if you look at the hour-by-hour hour forecast for Baton Rouge, for example, 4 a.m. is when we have our highest probability of rain, or at least that's where it was when I checked it about an hour and a half ago. So we are going to continue to have this kind of stormy weather, and then... Saturday and Sunday are going to be quite nice. But then around the corner, as we get into next week, we start with about a 35% chance of rain on Monday, and it builds to 65 and then 80% Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. So this, this rainy trend that we have been involved in is not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, and, I mean, we can handle a little rain. We live in Louisiana. But the severe storms that bring down big branches, bring down power lines, bring down whole trees. The hail, which can flat mess up your automobile, even break glass. You're gonna to have to watch out for that. So, uh, as I say, I was hoping I would be able to sit down and not have to mention a thing about the weather. Maybe you can go, isn't it a nice day? Aren't you glad all that is over? That is not to be. So, as they say, a word to the wise on this is sufficient. Uh, lots to talk about today, and I'm also going to get into, for those of you who watched the Clarence Bug Show immediately preceding this, I'm going to get into more of this 15-year-old who was accused of murdering a 74-year-old woman during an attempted burglary and home invasion at her home, uh, and how they have rearrested him while he was out on bond for trying to buy an illegal handgun in a Breck Park and trying to pay for it with counterfeit money. And there's a lot of questions about this, about why is he walking around with an ankle monitor, which, by the way, wasn't working. I'm going to get into that a little later in the program when I've got enough time to do it justice. Uh, but on the lighter side of the news, uh, Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla, the founder of SpaceX, and uh, I, the guy just kind of creeps me out. If you remember, he was the first big manufacturer of durable goods like automobiles that got into Bitcoin. And in fact, said he was accepting Bitcoin, digital currency, 
for Tesla automobiles. Well, now he tweeted saying that Tesla will not accept Bitcoin as payment. Now, I don't know how much you know about Bitcoin. I, I think it, that it is deliberately kind of obtuse as to what Bitcoin is, what it does, how you get it, how you get rid of it, things like this. But apparently, the way Bitcoin is created, it is mined. That's what they call it, mined. And basically what it is, people who mine Bitcoin to acquire it solve complex, unique puzzles. For this, they need huge computing power, huge servers. And as the value of Bitcoin goes up, the puzzles become increasingly more difficult and it requires more computer power to solve them. And what they're doing is Bitcoin gets its value from the amount of electric energy consumed to quote unquote mine the coin. Now, just to give you an example, one Bitcoin mining operation consumes in about 600 square feet. It consumes as much electricity as 500 average United States homes. It consumes as much elect electricity as some small emerging nations over the years. And by the way, the CO2 output, 22.9 million tons has been tagged for people mining Bitcoin. That is similar to a large city in the Western Hemisphere. Not a Baton Rouge, not a Lafayette, not a New Orleans. We're talking an Atlanta-sized city. And by the way, it's more than the entire nation of Sri Lanka, used to be called Ceylon, puts out in an entire year. So Mr. Weird, Elon Musk, says he's worried about the damage that is being done by Bitcoin mining, so he will no longer accept it for Tesla automobiles. I think he's also a little worried since he got hammered on Saturday Night Live at basically saying all these digital currencies, all cryptocurrencies are basically kind of a, a hustle. That might have something to do with it as well. More in a moment. First break on Exiles TV. Stick around. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing could ever bring me down 
It's the feeling. Exiles TV. I am Bill Profita, Kevin Gallagher taking some time off, and I'm going to assume that you know who you are. Glad to have you with us on what is promising to be a rainy afternoon throughout our television viewing area. Ah, I'm tired of it. I am very, very tired of it. Uh, for those of you who follow Roy Fletcher's program, Fletch Nation, it is online. It's also heard on a dozen or so radio stations. Uh, he has been very, very close to this story about the myriad number of complaints at the LSU Medical School in Shreveport and of their chancellor that are coming to the fore. There are at least eight complaints of sexual harassment, sexual discrimination, unwanted touching, uh, unwanted kissing, you get the idea. And it appears that very little is being done about the target of these allegations, which is Dr. G.E. Golly, who is the chancellor of the LSU Health Services Center in Shreveport. Um, last week, an attorney in Shreveport had a press conference with four female faculty, quote, staff, faculty slash staff members of the LSU Medical Center in Shreveport. These four, two of them are medical doctors who are professors, but also treat patients as clinicians. One of them is a PhD who is a researcher and the other is an EDD, a doctorate in education, who is involved in making sure the curriculums and the materials in the curricula are, in, are relevant to what the students are studying. These are not people who are working in low positions. These are educated people, thoughtful people, people who are professionals, many of whom have been there a long time. And they took in the complaints of four students that said they had been harassed, that they had been touched, and they didn't like it. They, as faculty members, did their duty by reporting it up the chain, all the way to Dr. Golly. And nothing has been done about it. There was a closed meeting, an executive session, about it last week at which six state legislators crashed the meeting. Now the people bringing the complaints could not be there. Their representatives could not be there. But these legislators used a little, 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 little back door in the, in the executive session meeting rules that says any member of the legislature can attend and they don't have to give a reason. So you have to wonder about that. But here is the latest. One of the employees, one of the faculty members, has been placed on administrative leave. Allison Jones, the lawyer representing the four professionals who were carrying the complaints of students, okay? They were not complaining themselves said this, after our press conference last week when my clients and I spoke out about the egregiously sexist and unjust working conditions perpetuated by Dr. Gali, unnamed medical residents made dubious complaints against my client, Dr. Jennifer Werner. She is being unfairly targeted in a malicious and retaliatory move that we believe was orchestrated by Dr. Gali because of her brave involvement in the protected activity of whistleblowing and opposing discrimination both for herself and for protected learners, the students. So one of the staff members has been placed on leave. Now, Dr. Golly, when the questions were raised, 
was placed on paid leave as chancellor. Paid leave. While they look into it. However, he is also a department head. And he's not been placed on leave from that position. So he is still at the LSU Medical Center Shreveport and its associated hospital, which I believe is administered by Ochsner Clinic. They're not named in any of these complaints, by the way. The Ochsner system is not named at all. I want to make that very clear. So he basically is just going on with his life where he can still tell people, you know, they're watching all of us, so you better watch what you do. And if we can get this woman, if we can get Dr. Warner out of the way, that would be helpful. No public investigative report of this at all. And in case you don't know it, talk to somebody who lives in Shreveport or up in that area. Talk to somebody who might have gone to medical school there or might have done a residency there or might have a relative that is being treated there, hospitalized there. There have been problems at this medical center for years, including documented cases of sexual assault of a patient that was unable to refuse because they gave her so many psychotropic drugs. This is an old case. But things like this continue. And again, I think the question that we have to have is this is still, and I know medical schools inside and out, let me tell you what. And the people there think God works for them. Particularly if you are a department head, if you are a chancellor, if you are important in both the medical and academic hierarchy, you believe you answer to no one. And because you heal and teach others to heal, because you save lives and teach others to save lives, you are to be allowed your proclivities or your bad temper or your biases or your rude behavior, because after all, unless God comes back to earth, you're the best thing these people are ever going to see. I understand this mindset. I also believe that Dr. Ghali is from a, cult, a culture that for centuries has looked at women as not on a par with men. How much of that plays into this, I don't know, but listen, let's really tell the truth about this. There are institutions of higher education. There are medical schools. There are major scientific organizations that have an awful lot of men with an awful lot of education that do an awful lot of good work, but at the same time, their upbringing, their culture, even their faith, believes that women are there for their pleasure and or abuse. So with this happening at one branch of the medical center of the state's flagship university, why aren't people in Baton Rouge, who are the closest to the governor who appoints the board of supervisors, the board of supervisors themselves, why aren't they demanding more questions and a peek at the answers with what's going on in Shreveport. I wish I had an answer. We're just going to leave that open as a question, but I do encourage you all to look into it as well. Because let me tell you what, it stinks. It stinks to high heaven. And we have enough trouble in this state without having one branch of our medical school look like it's a playground for fools that like to sexually harass women. We can't afford that. Back in a moment on Exiles TV. Live and 
play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugge, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugge Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. The selection is deep, and the time to get a used car is right now from the Team Automotive Group. Shop and save on over 125 certified vehicles, and choose from more than 700 pre-owned vehicles at any of our team locations. Or log on anytime at teamautoused.com. Welcome back. Glad to have you with us for Exiles TV. Uh, again, a reminder, you hear a little twitter of noise behind me. That's coming from people that are really enjoying their lunch right now. At Bayou Smokehouse on Corsi Boulevard, 10655. If you're coming to Baton Rouge to visit, make it a stop for lunch or dinner. If you're here in Baton Rouge, let me tell you what, you are not going to find better barbecue anywhere. So do come on by and see us. Uh, Clarence talked about this a little bit during the last part of his show, and uh, it's simply a coincidence, but I was prepared to talk about it as well today. Uh, if this doesn't make you angry, then I don't know what will. If this doesn't show you that our system of justice, particularly as it pertains to juveniles, needs some adjustment, then I don't know what will. If this doesn't make you angry, that there are people who are out on bail who are supposed to be monitored and they're not being monitored, I don't know what will. And if this doesn't make you walk around with absolute paranoid fear of teenagers in our community, then I don't know what will. This is the story of Xavier Cade. Xavier was 15 year old when he was charged with first degree murder. He was charged in December of 2019. He was accused of killing 74 year old Angela Heyman during a burglary at her home. Now he has been arrested again. He was arrested at the end of last week and charged with, are you ready for this? Using counterfeit money to buy an illegal handgun. 
another teenager who was selling the gun to Xavier Cade was charged with possession of a firearm as a juvenile. They met up at a Breck Park to arrange the transaction for the firearm. Here's where it's going to start to make you even crazier than you already are. Remember, Xavier Cade has been charged with first-degree murder. He was in the carport of a home, shaking door handles on the car, and then breaking in when the homeowners heard him. He exchanged gunfire with the man of the house, and then when 74-year-old Angela Heyman, the woman of the house, came out, he shot her dead. He was wounded in the exchange with Mr. Heyman and he limped off to a house nearby and beat on the door and said he needed help. Well, they made sure he didn't bleed to death, but they also called the cops. They picked him up. So here we are. He's what D.A. Hiller Moore calls a trigger puller. And I agree with that. I think that's an appropriate description. He's been charged with murder. He was burglarizing a house with his brother who was an accomplice. They had a firearm and he pulled the trigger. And a homeowner is dead. This is the situation. But since he's a juvenile, he was out on bail and required to wear an ankle monitor. However, it wasn't being monitored. You want to know why? It wasn't charged up. It had no power. Now, when the police went to his home, they found the gun and they found even more counterfeit money. This is someone who is now just under 17 years old and he's buying guns with counterfeit money and he's got a stash of counterfeit money and he's already pilled, pulled the trigger twice on two human beings and killed one of them. His ankle monitor wasn't charged up. Who answers for that? Somebody tell me. Who answers for that? The court system, the judicial system, uses vendors to supply ankle monitors and the vendors are required to monitor these people that are under their custody as a condition of their bond but isn't the person who is wearing the ankle monitor Aren't they supposed to keep it charged? Aren't they supposed to let the company that's monitoring them or the court know, hey, mine isn't working. I don't want to get into more trouble than I am. The fact of the matter is we don't know at this point how long Xavier Cade, the trigger puller, was walking around without an ankle monitor. So we don't know where he went. We do know that he committed two crimes at that Breck Park when he was wearing a monitor that wasn't charged up and he's been arrested for those. We don't know if the monitoring company's response was proper, if there was a way he and his friends found to fool the company. We don't know any of that. In other words, we've got more questions than answers on a 15-year-old who shot, allegedly, a 74-year-old while he and his brother were allegedly trying to burglarize their home. They did get inside, by the way. When the husband produced a gun of his own and bullets started flying, they decided to go back outside but then they paused to shoot his wife. 
Now, D.A. Hill and Moore says, he's noticing, are you noticing this uptick in violent crimes by juveniles in East Baton Rouge Parish? It's also happening in surrounding areas. In West Baton Rouge Parish, a 14-year-old was arrested for the murder of a 15-year-old girl in Port Allen. It looks like it was a murder for hire. The DA over there, Tony Clayton, repeated his entreaty to the legislature to fix the problem in our juvenile justice system. I'm going to quote DA Clayton. It appears they are getting younger and younger with these violent crimes. I am not in a position to send them home when they're accused of a murder. DA Hiller Moore on our side of the river said action needs to be taken with these juvenile criminals. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is a quote from DA Hiller Moore. I think the legislature is really struggling. What do we do? Do we treat this juvenile as a juvenile when they've committed a crime that's dangerous and violent? And he said this, what is the best way to protect the public? This entire system we've got, you can commit multiple murders as a 14 year old and will never know your identity. We'll never know where you live. We'll never know if you've got a 15-year-old brother who's just as violent and showed you the ropes. You're entitled to bail. And apparently you're entitled to let your ankle monitor go dead and not get a visit from somebody that's going to haul you back to jail and keep you there until your ankle monitor is working again. The question is, What's the rest of the population entitled to? Are we entitled to not have to fear these violent young criminals? Are we entitled to know that Xavier Cade and everyone like him is locked up? Or at the very least is being continuously monitored and that means continuously, no breaks. Are we entitled to that? You know, I understand the people who years and years ago didn't want to send adults to places like Parchment in Mississippi or Angola in Louisiana. I get that. But that was a different era. Those were different teenage criminals. A lot of these criminals were stealing, smoking dope, joy riding in cars you very rarely heard of a 14 year old emptying the magazine of a semi-automatic weapon into an occupied dwelling and killing a 15 year old back in those days you didn't hear about xavier cade and his brother trying to break into a house and shooting both the occupants killing one of them in those days I think we need to flip the page on this. I think that there is no good purpose in shielding violent juvenile criminals. I think at the very least, if they commit a crime of violence, armed robbery, carjacking, kidnapping, sexual assault, firing a weapon, killing somebody, stabbing somebody, beating somebody, at the very least, we should know who they are. We should know if this person lived a block and a half from us. And I think we should know, as the public, that they are locked up until their trial date. And I think we need to make it easier to try them as adults. You do adult crime, you do adult time. And I really don't understand 
as Tony Clayton said, and as Hiller Moore said, why we don't have people like you and I down at the legislature every day bending the ears of our elected representatives saying, you need to do something to ensure our safety from juvenile criminals. You need to do something to ensure that we can get the proper information on juvenile criminals. I need to know if my 14-year-old has been hanging out with a guy that's got an illegal handgun and counterfeit money and who capped a 74-year-old woman. These are things we need to know. And why isn't the legislature hearing about this every single day and making a move to do something about it? And does one faction of the legislature think it's a really good idea to shield these juvenile criminals? Time for a break. We'll be back in a moment. Stick around. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. Your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with The Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. The first big sale of the year is here. The Dream Garage Spring Event is underway at Team Honda. For the first time ever, get $12.50 customer cash on every new 21 Passport. Or get 0% for 60 months on every new 21 Pilot at Louisiana's number one Honda dealer, Team Honda. Sometimes life is wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private health care is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. Exiles TV. I am Bill Profita, Kevin Gallagher, taking a couple of uh, uh, days off. Glad you are with us. So the um, the hacked Colonial Pipeline is now trickling with fuel for our automobiles and trucks once again. Uh, apparently, they can't just turn it back on. They have uh, they have reprogrammed around the hack, from my as my understanding of it. Um, and uh, fuel is flowing again, but they said it will probably take four or five more days to get normal supplies. Now, this is the largest pipeline in our nation, and it runs from Houston 
and the rest of the Gulf Coast all the way up to New York State, it delivers about 45% of all the fuel that is consumed on the East Coast. And um, drivers in the southeast part of the country are particularly dependent on fuel that comes out of this pipeline. Now, if you can't get the pipeline, if you can't get the fuel out by pipeline from all the refineries in the Gulf, I mean, we live among them, then you got to truck it. That can't carry as much, it can't carry it as quickly. Uh, as they have said, uh, all lines, this is Colonial Pipeline, including those lateral lines that have been running manually will return to normal operations. It will take several days for deliveries to return to normal. In the Southeast, drivers are finding some gas stations that have no gas. Uh, according to AAA and Jeanette McGee, who tracks fuel for that organization, she said, we're not seeing a lack of supply. It's a transportation issue. She said, there is already enough supply to fuel the United States for the entire summer. But what we're having is an issue with getting it to the gas stations because the pipeline is down. So you're hearing tales of woe uh, from people in the southeast because the pipeline supplies their jobbers who get the money to get the gas to their gas stations. Um, what we're also seeing is we are seeing some rather foolish people that are panic buying gasoline, particularly in areas that are unaffected. And I'm sure you have by now seen either the photographs or the video of people filling up multiple gas cans in an area that is not adversely affected because they think, well, what the hell? I might as well hoard gas. I'm sure you have seen the video of the gas station in North Carolina, the operator of which has probably already been arrested, who had gas, but decided because there was a perceived shortage that he would raise the price of a gallon of unleaded to seven dollars. Seven bucks a gallon. And he had fuel in his pods. Apparently, the North Carolina Attorney General has taken a very grim view of that. Uh, they do have a price gouging law just like we do. But people are acting like idiots. Now, I know you've seen the people filling up the gas cans. Uh, my personal favorite is the guy who is bending over to fill cans on the ground. And he's got so many of them, they're on their side and all that. And he's a substantial man. And his stretchy shorts were coming further down every time he bent over to fill one of these gas cans. And so if you wanted to count the cans in the picture, you had to make sure you didn't miss the two large white ones that were attached to his hips. Sitting there with his pants moving toward his ankles so he could fill up gas cans that he has knocked all over the ground because he's in such a hurry to hoard gasoline. But have you seen the people who are filling plastic grocery bags with gasoline? Have you seen this? Now, how stupid are these people? This is off the chart stupid. Anybody in the class want to tell me what happens if you fill a plastic grocery bag with gasoline? Anybody? Anybody at all? Well, sooner rather than later, the gasoline melts that very thin plastic and you have a trunk full of free gasoline if you put the bags in your trunk. 
And you better hope that when you use your turn signals or your lights or hit your brakes, that you don't have a little bit of a short or an arcing over of those lights into your trunk or it will blow you into the next county. It is so bad. This is, this is the new stupidity. This makes toilet paper during COVID look like reasonable, rational people. This is the new stupidity. It is so bad with people putting gasoline, not just into unapproved containers, but plastic shopping bags. It's gotten so bad that the EPA has put out a television PSA warning of the dangers of putting gasoline into shopping bags. To think that there are numerous people in this country that are so stupid that they think it's a, a good and appropriate idea to go to a gas pump, insert their card, grab the nozzle, hold a plastic bag from Walmart or Winn-Dixie or Fresh Market and start pouring gasoline into it. The only thing they're not doing is smoking while they're doing it. But that'll come. The stupidity of the American public is absolutely amazing. And to think, to think that we, we have to have a PSA that was put together rather hastily by the Environmental Protection Agency saying, please don't do this. You're going to blow yourself up. It's dangerous. Do these people also stick butter knives into the electrical outlets at their house to see what will happen? Do they do that? Please tell me. Please tell me there's been a worldwide conspiracy to punk us all and there really aren't people who are doing this. Please tell me that. I need to feel reassured about those who are moving freely around me. Uh, as far as the situation in South Louisiana, by the way, here is, here is the straight dope. This is from Tyler Gray, who is president uh, of uh, Mid-Continent uh, Oil and Gas Association. Tyler has been a guest on this show. Here is what he says. Louisiana is one of the lucky states that has plenty of processing and refining here in the state, so we're making it here just fine. I would not worry about a shortage locally. Around the capital area particularly, I don't anticipate that there will be any shortages. Actually, he said that Baton Rouge and parts of Louisiana could actually see a surplus. He said the refineries around our area that normally would send fuel to, to the continent, uh, colonial pipeline, they're going to be looking to get rid of it. So they're going to put it in, in trucks, tankers, and sell it locally. So we may actually see a little bit of a price drop, uh, uh, drop, excuse me, not dump, price drop here in Baton Rouge because when this all broke, if you remember, gas was sitting around 255 at the big mega stations, you know, the, the raceways and the racetracks and, and, uh, and the Murphy Oils and the, uh, the Exxon Go-Marts. And then it bumped a little bit. But I actually found gas yesterday for 2.39 a gallon. So here in Baton Rouge, I guess the word is 
and in Lafayette, and in New Orleans, and in Homa and Thibodeau. Don't bring all your excess shopping bags and fill them with gasoline because we don't have a shortage here. And chances are really good that we're not going to have a shortage here. Quick break, we'll be back to wrap it up in just a moment. Spiders. Premier Pest Services. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier Jr. and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we get back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2 as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Hi, business owners. Phase three. Woohoo! But do your customers know you're back? Well, that's where the Clarence Bug Show and Pelican Broadcasting can help. Right now, we've got great rates on advertising packages to help you get the word out. Shoot me an email at bugsclarence at gmail.com. Or better yet, call me up. I'd love to talk with you. 225-485-6839. Let's get together and make phase three the best it can possibly be. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com Welcome back to Exiles TV. Very glad to have you with us. Uh, real quickly, here's a question for you. Are some words so offensive? Is their meaning so onerous that just seeing or hearing the word in your workplace creates a hostile work environment? I ask the question because the Supreme Court is considering right now whether or not they're going to take up the case of Robert Collier. Robert worked as an operating room aide at Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas. White nurses called him another black employee's boy. Management ignored two large swastikas painted on a storage room wall. And for six months, the elevator he used to get to his duty station had the N-word carved into it. The Supreme Court is going to consider whether or not they're going to review a ruling made by the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals from Justice Amy Coney Barrett, who is now on the Supreme Court, who said in a ruling of another case 
that just having that word in your presence, as offensive as it may be, probably does not make a hostile work environment that is actionable. So now, the Supreme Court, and the word is they are likely to say that they are going to take this, are going to look at this very ruling in this issue with Mr. Robert Collier's case. And what they will decide is whether or not, quoting now, the mere utterance of an ethnic or racial epithet would allow a person to sue under the Civil Rights Act's Title VII. Whether or not someone using that word as a pejorative to one of their fellow employees or maybe their subordinate creates a hostile work environment. This is going to be a very, very interesting case. And I agree the word is offensive. I agree that it shouldn't be used. And I agree that when you use it, you are creating hostility for your coworker or for your employee. The question is, how many other words would qualify? It'd be very interesting to see what they say at the Supreme Court. That does it for Exiles TV on this day. Again, keep an eye on the weather. Gonna be nasty for another day or two, but then we'll have a nice weekend. In the meantime, take good care of yourself, be well, be safe, and I'll see you again real, real soon.